This video is not intended for children. Viewer discretion is advised. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Mornings of Mischief. I'm your host, Stone. Loki, and with me today is the one, the only, the captain of disaster, Captain Track. Good morning, Captain Track. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing all right. And good morning, Derek McManus, Adega Outlaw, Purple Valkyrie, and Samantha Joe. The Valkyries are here. Chris Persia, good morning. Lady Miss, the Guardian of the Void, is with us today in chat, folks. Project story time. I am sure that Bree the Cheese Larson isn't far behind. Matthew Berkland, good morning. Sit room, how you doing, buddy? Jedi Bill 797, Mr. Hyde. Heiress of Chaos, the Battle Angel, is here. Darth Aster, my tentacled brother from another mother. B Star, good morning, B Star. Colin P. Smith, how are you doing? Sit room, good morning. Jeff Franklin, how are you doing? Red Monarch, good morning. Dave G. Sound, how you doing, brother? Man, all right, so we've got one hell of a show today, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you um you watched these episodes yesterday as yes, I, did. I did. We've got three episodes for you today, folks. We have Home on the Remains, Dream the Little Dream, aka Reunion, and Out of Their Minds. So we will start off with Home on the Remains. And the synopsis for Home on the Remains is desperately short on food. Chiana leads the crew to a dead boudong where she once worked. Without any currency, they must work for food and supply the deteriorating Zan with meat. So Zan usually doesn't eat meat. But because they are starving, she is starting to mutate into a monster and must have meat to survive. Positive Candor, great googly moogly, everyone. Great googly moogly to you, Positive Candor. Mexican Iron Man, smashed like heading to make breakfast in kitchen and coffee. Been up all night. Damn. Someone's burning the midnight oil. No kidding. So, they start off the episode with Crichton. Speed breaking in today. What? I said, at least we know he won't be breaking in today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you never we know. know. Yeah, 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 he won't be breaking in today. He's too tired. Too tired <laughs> to break into Valhalla. So they start off home on the remains with Crichton frying up Dentix. And if you don't remember what Dentix are, folks, Dentix are worm-like creatures that 
um, crawl around in your mouth and clean your teeth. That's how they brush their teeth in Farscape is they have wor little wormies. Looks like a big grub worm that crawls around in your mouth and you don't swallow the dentic. You never swallow the dentic. And he's frying them in a pan. And Aaron tells him, you can't, you can't eat, uh, the, you can't eat a dentic. And he said, you can eat anything fried. Anything you can fry, you can eat. And he takes one bite out of that dentic and pretty much like throws it up and gives it to Rigel. More like shoves it in his face. Yeah. Or shoves it in his mouth. It's, 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 yeah, it's not a pretty picture. Obviously they're starving to death. If they are trying to swallow the dentic, frying up a dentic and trying to swallow it. So a budong, you may ask, what the hell is a budong? Well, a budong is a giant space creature that is the biggest life form in the galaxy. Apparently, these giant ass things are big enough to even swallow a leviathan, a command carrier, you name it, they can fucking swallow it. And Chien apparently has a friend on this budong. That works for food. Mm -hmm. So they stop by to see this friend, and this friend is dying. Apparently, there is a creature in the innards of the budong that is killing the workers. So, Gianna works with the um the foreman on this budong who incidentally had a thing for gianna back in the day but never well this is interesting ah, <laughs> guess something's going on with uh loki and i just morning. got booted out of my own stream that's nice <laughs> it's always nice it's always nice it's always a nice thing so, give a damn oh, yeah. skull to stream yards this morning for booting me out of my own stream. <clears throat> yeah, Chris Persia, we lost Loki. Boomer! Thank you. Thank you, Bree. <laughs> Would anyone like Bree with their cheese? No. No, thank you. Definitely not. But Crichton and crew obviously would love brie with their cheese because they don't have any cheese and they don't even have any brie now nah, mexican iron man was not me i bet it wasn't i bet it wasn't i bet she's trying to get in i bet she's on the other side I'm of the door sure right now yeah chris persia thought mexican iron man was finally taking over you're 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 not too far off so <clears throat> they Decide well if we want food, we gotta do what um this this ugly ass alien says and get food. Mm -hmm. One of Chiana's friends, an, an old woman that has mined the Budong for ages past, is also attacked, and that's when things start to really take a toll because multiple people that apparently had huge fines in this budong from mining in this budong have been killed by this monster creature. What did you think? What did you think leading up to this discovery that this creature is taking out all of the high and mighty Oh, this was this was a hard episode. It uh, uh that was kind of gross actually. Yeah, cuz they're inside a live oh, a dead creature that was once living. Mhm. Mm so they find out um eventually Crichton finds out because he gets attacked by this this monster or this thing that's supposed to look like a monster the um creature creation shop didn't really do a great job no. I think, on this one um 
that it is Chiana's old boss, the foreman of this mining operation on the Budon. And he is using the creature to take out the miners that find um, the big payday, the ones that are going to get paid big time, the ones that are going to get to leave and walk away from this Budon because they've been mining there for so long. He's taking them out and taking their fines for himself. Yep. Oh, yeah. And they end up fighting the creature and um, they end up they end up with the food they need for Zan. You know, and Zan's eating barbecue. They're all eating barbecued boudon at the end of this episode. And that's really it. It's a, it is a filler episode. Um, there's nothing really that you find out about our characters. There's nothing really that um, any kind of extraordinary information you gain in this episode. Hello, Pudgy. Good morning, Pudgy. Well, I do find there was one thing. Sure, go ahead. That you find out. In, uh, normally, Zan likes sunlight. Yes. And uh, so, you know, of course, she's exposed to light and, ooh, does not have a good effect. No, no, not when she's starving. No, sir, not when she's starving. So... The next episode on our list this morning is Dream a Little Dream, Reunion. And the synopsis is, when Zan and Crichton are stranded in a transport pod, Zan recounts the story of her time with Chiana and Rigel after the episode Family Ties, which was the last episode of the first season. Mm -hmm. They landed on a planet where 90% of the population are lawyers, Surprised they aren't eating each other on that planet. It sounds almost as bad as a planet with blue haired land whales. And Zan was framed for murder. So they go down to this planet. They're hanging out. They're, they're getting ready to leave because Zan is like, we have to keep going. We have to keep searching for them. I know they're out there. Yada, yada, yada. And she, what was it? Jaywalks. Is yeah, jaywalking. She jaywalks and gets arrested, but then gets framed for the murder of a um, a lawyer, because of course they're all lawyers. There are two races on this planet, two main races. You've got the worker race, and then you've got the lawyers. And this lawyer that has been killed was advocating for the rights of the workers. Mm -hmm. the regular everyday Joes to get them more um, status in the, in this, on this planet. Zan gets framed right. for the murder. Exactly. Obviously Zan didn't do it. Right. Zan couldn't do something like this. Right. Nope. Except that she used to murder people. Yep. So she, Zan is like losing her mind because she doesn't have Dargo and Crichton and Aaron. And these people have become her family. So obviously this is all set up. Zan did not murder anyone. Zan didn't kill anyone. But they have to prove that. So it's up to pretty much up to Rigel and Chiana. I would already be expecting a death sentence. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you left out the best part. Oh, did I? What was that? That uh, the uh, <clears throat> lawyers cannot use legal trickery or else they will suffer the same fate as their clients. Yeah. If, if Rigel and Shannon are caught lying or manipulating, then they're screwed. They're absolutely screwed. They're going to have to follow Zan to the execution chamber. And Colin P. P. Smith says she's tricked into jaywalking by an agent provocator overriding the lights. Yes, she is. That is how they get Zan, the lawyer's tricker. And the lawyers are behind this. The lawyers are behind the murders. They don't want anything to change. 
they don't want um, the the lower races to get any kind of advantage. They want to. Um, and Darth Monkey or lawyers land wells. Lawyers land wells. Option number three. I jump into a black hole. Yes. <laughs> and we have a one dollar tip from three thirty three. Thank you so much. Three thirty three. I think I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> And score! And 3.33 says, Long live U.S. that won't give up nor surrender. Low-key, keeping it real every day. Much gratitude and blessings to you, my friend. Thank you so very much. 333. Thank you. You are keeping the lights burning bright in Valhalla. Thank you so very much, 333. Absolutely. Hello, Pudgy. Good morning. Good morning. You got any of those Pudgy sized tacos? Chris Persia, why do those lawyers sound more and more like those Hollywood elitists? Because they act just like those Hollywood elitists. They really do. And this episode is about a frame job. It's about putting something they wanted to do off on Zan, making her look guilty for it, blaming her, pointing the finger at her. And it comes down to um, figuring out who really did this and actually doing some legal trickery. What does... Cap, what does Chiana and Rigel um, get handed? That they, go ahead. Well, first they get handed all these legal documents, and it's a bunch of them. And they go into this bar, and lo and behold, they're handed this little book that actually is the the ancient law. Which basically covers everything, and everything has come since that has been built on that law. What it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, is this one little book Cap's talking about has all the answers in it. They have overcomplicated everything as far as their legal system goes. But at the end of the day, everyone has to follow the rules in that book. That's never changed. And in that, because they know who did this, Chiana and Rigel find out who is who is behind this. What, who has set up Zan? They are presented with a option of how to deal with him, and it is the what was it, the light of truth. Yes. The light of truth. Basically, if you um, if you light up a stick and you point it at a defendant or someone you are interviewing on the stand, if they lie, it will glow brighter every time they lie. Yep. And with some assistance from Pilot and Moya, who were going to leave and abandon them because Moya wants to look for her baby Talon. Oh, yeah. They get the head of the prosecution team on the stand, the guy who runs that lawyer's office, and they grill him. And every time he lies, that stick lights up. And eventually he breaks down and they find out the truth. And Zan is set free and they are allowed to continue on their way. It's a weird episode, especially to go back and watch because you're kinder on it. I, I don't know how kind you were on this episode. I don't know whether you were like, ah, or, or how you felt. How did you feel about it? I didn't like it. It really was not a good episode. I mean, it was better than the one with the, uh, you know, spores from, from Zan, but it, it really, it was a filler. Yeah, it's a filler. In fact, all three of these episodes that we got to watch this week, are filler episodes leading up to um, 
the three-parter. Give me just a second. Look at the princess. Yeah. There's a three-parter coming up. We're going to get next week. We're going to get to my three Crichtons. Look at the princess part one, a kiss is but a kiss. And look at the princess part two. I do, I think. And then the last episode in that three-parter is the Maltese Crichton, which we will catch two weeks from today. Yep. So we get to leave you kind of on a cliffhanger, guys. That'll be exciting. Um, you go back and you watch this episode, and it, it you kind of ca- have to connect the dots to the end of last season because this is an in-between episode. This is in-between season one and season two. It's something that happened before we came back in. Why they didn't start off with this, I don't know. Why they didn't tell it in order, I don't know. But um, you could have watched this right after the first episode, and it would have made more sense. Quite honestly, from from what I saw, you know, I think they actually made the right decision with this because it really wasn't a good episode. No. And they you know, end up using flashbacks to, you know, reuse the old stuff they'd already filmed. Yep. So they just told it in flashbacks. Yeah. And Colin P. Smith said, one reason why court scenes make such good drama, perhaps because of the performance aspect. Yes. Yes, the end of this episode is the best part. It is. It really is when they when they prosecute they, or when they get the the head of the the lawyer team on the stand and they grill him. It's the best part of the episode. So the last episode we're going to talk about today is out of their minds, and this episode holds, even though it's not that good, holds a special place for me because they reuse the design of the Skeksis. In fact, Crichton even says that, that they look like Skeksis. And, of course, we are talking about Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. So the fact that Jim Henson was doing the creature creation shop for this series, you you had to have the Skeksis in there somewhere. And the the design team did a good job, in my opinion. Um, They look very familiar to the Skeksis we know. They sound very familiar to the Skeksis we know. In fact, you could almost wonder, are these Skeksis that left that planet in the Dark Crystal and went out and and explored space? Because they are backstabbing, evil, and um, you can't trust them in this either. So the synopsis for this, um, after an attack by the Halcyons, The crew of Moya find their minds and bodies switched. They must find a way to get their minds back into their own bodies before the Halcyons can power up again and destroy Moira. And Colin P. Smith, they could even have combined this episode and episode one in a two-part double-length episode with two stories running concurrently. Yes, they could have. Yeah, that would have been been much better. Yeah, a two-hour long episode going back and forth between what's going on with Crichton and Zan- and Dargo and Aaron and this. You're absolutely right, Colin P. Smith. In fact, I think that would have been a good a double opener, a good yeah. two-parter. So the Halcyons, the the bird-like creatures, have attacked Moya, and for because of the shield. Because of the shield they got off of this Albinian, it fractures everyone and switches their bodies. And you actually get some funny ass scenes with Rigel in in Crichton, Aaron in Crichton, um, Aaron in in or um, Crichton inside Aaron. <laughs> So what would you do if you were suddenly transported into the body of Claudia Black? Mm. That's an interesting question. Well, we all know what Crichton did. Well, well, we all know what she did. (laughs) Yeah, we all know what she did, too. (laughs) 
we all know what she did too. First thing Crichton did was was pop the top and go, mmm. <laughs> so pretty much um, they have to figure out how to get back into their bodies and stop the attack. Zan is on the Halcyon ship begging for assistance, tell, trying to tell them we are not your enemy. But the Halcyons have been attacked, haven't they? By yes, Leviathan. they have. Yes, they have. And what Leviathan was that? That would be Talon. Talon, ladies and gentlemen, the child of Moya, the peacekeeper Leviathan hybrid, is now flying around, blowing shit up. Why Chris is doing this? Maybe he just wants to show how big of a gun he has. You don't know. Um, but Talon attacked the Halcyons. The Halcyons are pissed. The Halcyons come after Moya because Moya is the Leviathan. Zan's over there trying to basically beg for mercy and um, convinces the second in command of the ship to take out her superior and seize power. Yeah. Shadow cat. And we all know what Rigel did to peen down John's leg. Yes. So again, a filler episode. What did you think? Cap. Oh, I really didn't like this. It really, it really, really, uh, of the three, I would say it was the worst. Um, it just like, yeah, like you said, it was filler. And yeah, I mean, there were a few things that were funny. Um, and in fact, a couple of things that were kind of disturbing. Um, there was a scene with, and it's the, the thing is, I don't remember who was in whose body at the time, because there were a couple of different switches. But it was uh, Dargo's body and Crichton's body, and they were kind of... I, I almost thought they were getting ready to make out or something. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And Eastland Burkholder says, not a filler episode. I love the name tag episode. Yes, this is the name tag episode. This is the episode where they have um, basically had to put everyone's picture around their necks so that they can figure out who each one of them are. Eastland Burkholder, what I mean by a filler episode is um, the only really thing that connects this episode to any episode after it is you get to find out that Talon's running around blowing shit up. Talon's running around attacking him and Kreis are just running amok. There's really, um, there's really nothing else that connects this in a big way to any other episode. So when I say a filler episode, I'm talking about a episode that really has no big connection with the rest of the story. The house scenes never come back. You never have to deal with the consequences of what Talon did besides what happens in this episode. It is a episode that they did to move the story along without really dealing with anything, the bigger picture in the season. You know, I, I can't speak to that because I haven't seen anything further along. Although, I'll be honest, I was tempted to watch a fourth episode because it's like, these really weren't that good. I mean, they weren't horrible, like, uh, you know, lower decks, but they weren't good episodes, in my opinion. And um, I agree that this episode is funny. You know, there's some funny stuff that happens in this episode. Crichton, um, you know, and and Aaron, and Aaron is basically admitting, you know, well, you have no idea what I did in your body. And Crichton's like, ah, <laughs> like, what? 
Nothing. Um, the so who brought up Pi, Pip and Pilot were good too. Yes, yeah, Shadow Cat. Yeah. Switching, yeah, switching Pip and Pilot and and Dargo. You know, the three of them having to flip back and forth and Dargo freaking out in Gianna's body and Gianna being in Dargo's body. Yes. Funny. And one of them dead undead birds threw up on the power lines. Yes. Absolutely. See, that one I knew right away. It's like, uh-huh, this is a little too suspicious. Uh, you know, why all of a sudden this this bird that comes on, you know, oh, you know, all of a sudden he needs to puke. It's like, it, yeah, this is a little too convenient. Something's up. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I, yeah, you know, when you can see something's going on and you're going, uh, eh, something's, this is just not great writing. Uh, yeah, again, filler episode. It's, it's, I think it had potential to have been good. It's just really, I think they were rushing through it. They were trying to get to a plot they had in mind. And I don't know it because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Maybe you can answer that part for me. Well, there is a big three-parter coming up. And Colin P. Smith just mentioned that. He said, I watched My Three Crichtons, which is the first episode we're going to cover next week. Because he expected us to do the three-parter together. Um, My Three Crichtons is a great episode. And I didn't want to rush through it. That is actually one of my favorite episodes of the season is my three Crichtons. Um, and I don't want to ruin anything for Cap going yeah. too far into that. But I, I want to give it its due. I also want to give um, the, the um, oh, Lord, a kiss is but a kiss. The look at the princess three-parter, it's due as well. Yeah. I don't want to rush through that either. So... Well, looking at the, the amount of time we have left, I think we could have, probably could have covered the fourth episode. <laughs> we probably could have. Oh, gosh. So, are, are you guys watching along? Is anybody out there watching along? Shadowcat, yes. Ben, Ben's been talking about that for a long time. And they had a plan. They did have a plan that somehow Crichton and Aaron were able to get their child to Earth. And that child grew up on Earth. Somehow they were able to get that kid back to Earth. And the, the child grew up on Earth. Um, whether or not they follow through with that, I have heard daughters now. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to change it. So, I, hey, wait, wait. Dude, no. Don't tell no, me. No. Dude, no, you, you can't. Oh, so. Boss? Boss? Yeah. We have a 911 emergency. Hey, Trek, I love you. I would never barge in on your show, but we got a bit of a 911 here, and it's uh, something that we actually got to get our heads around here. So I would never bust. Well, you know, I bust in on shit all the time, but I love my man Trek, and I apologize, but it's important. Okay. Look at the link I see you on your Twitter. This is 911 shit that we need as a community need to get around. I'm serious. This is like serious shit. What's Bring going it up. On? What is going on, brother? You're not going to be happy, dude. But that's why you pay me to monitor this shit. He pays you? Yeah, zero dollars an hour. It's Mexican wages, but you know. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. You make you make do with what I can. Actually, you know what I do is I I walk around Valhalla, I take pictures of them, and I go into the community and I pretend it's me. And you know, sometimes I get you know morsels of corn and you know baskets and shit like that. You know. 
Doesn't always work, but you know. Uh, you better tell you better tell them what's going on because not everybody has Twitter. So uh... okay, well here's the deal, people. We got an issue with Netflix having released. We lady, everybody knows Lady Greenmaster. She's definitely yes. one of the smartest and best of us. Lady Greenmaster this morning dropped. Yes, Colin Smith, the Netflix movie. Lady Greenmaster dropped uh, um, a video about an hour ago, which is going viral fast. And Jeremy just dropped one from Geeks and Gamers about this uh, Netflix movie that features ten and eleven year olds. Uh, in a movie called Cuties, and it's about it's about uh, how these girls come together and how we need to like uh, let them explore their sexual awareness in a cute in a in a in a uh, in a competition that features twerking. No, I swear to fucking God. No, let me tell you why it's an emergency. It's a cultural emergency. It is an absolute cultural emergency. Netflix, you know, I love I love how like you know they can arrest people for like you know pedophilia and like having shit on their computers. I want to know who at Netflix is going to jail for this shit. And if supposedly, this thing won, a, won, won some kind of award at the Sundance competition. Yeah. So t- the movie talks about bringing four girls from four different racial backgrounds together and how they, they, they defy their, their family's conservative cultural values and, and, and put together a group kind of like on the down low, like underground and shit, and they go and enter as 11, 10 and 11-year-olds a twerking competition. Oh, oh no fucking way. Oh, Heel versus Babyface did a uh, video as well. I sent you the link for So I want to send you, I'm going to put in the link a few things. Well, first of all, on Netflix, it's called Cuties. And as Colin, Colin, uh, Colin's on point. I don't know if Colin wants to jump in here. I don't know. He, he knows a lot. He's right. The Netflix changed the description twice to the movie. So the latest description talks about, talks about, um, how they're coming of cultural background and they're resisting the conservative cultural norms and and um, exploring who they are as women. But that's not how it originally came out. It originally came out much sounded much more pedophile. But I'm going to drop in the chat Lady Gravemaster's video because I cannot do it justice. One because she did a fantastic job of putting together uh, a report. Number two is I'm so living angry right now. I don't have my thoughts about me like normal. I mean, I've got a six year old. I don't want my son. Getting exposed to this shit and him thinking this is how it's going to be okay for like you know, women to be treated like sex objects when they're not even you know when they're not even ready. This is the wrong message, Hollywood. You pedophile fucks. I I cannot fucking believe that. I I can't believe it. I I believe it, but I fucking can't believe it. This is why they don't want police. This is why they want to do whatever the fuck they want. You know, I can't. I can't believe we looked at people in Hollywood as influencers. They don't have. They shouldn't be influencing shit. Eleven fucking years old. Fucking sick. I'm. 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 No. No. Right. That right there. I just dropped the link. I just dropped the link to Lady Gravemaster uh, on her thing, and um, I just dropped the link to her video. She's done. Please listen to her video. It's short. It's tight. And spread it as far as wide as you can. Now, I realize not everybody can quit their their Netflix account. I'm terminating mine today. I'm going to have to talk to my son about it. And he and I have a really good combination. Although well, he's only seven, he understands there's thing called bad content, good content. And I went to daddy's going to talk to him about bad content. And he's not going to go and look it up. He's going to understand. He's going to understand. He's a good kid at seven. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He said, "Dad, we can't support him." He knows about not supporting stuff like Star Wars, Star Trek, and stuff like that. Good content, bad content. And he understands like some of it is over the line. He's a good kid. Yeah. We've been reading the Bible together since he was since he was two and a half years old. This is bullshit. And, Chris and they first. didn't call us to the right racist and sexist, and we don't promote women. We draw the line right here. We cancel them. We cancel these SJW fucks right here, right now. We draw the line. We communicate to Netflix. We cancel accounts, and we fucking blow some shit up and stop being silent. We're a bunch of lazy conservatives waiting for shit to change. It changes now, Valhalla. Loki, like you said, we change shit now. We now change I'm it now. I'm going to let you take over the conversation because I'm too heated right now. I'm angry. I'm on the verge of te- I don't know if I'm on the verge of shooting something or, or tears. This is not the America I want. No. This is not the America I grew up for. No, and this is some sick ass shit. It doesn't get any. We just celebrated Susan B. Anthony's hundredth, hundredth fucking anniversary of women having the right to vote, Loki. And on the same day, Netflix releases this, featuring ten and eleven year old girls twerking on the hundredth anniversary of a woman's right to vote. 
This is where we live. This is where we live. We are not hiding. I want everybody to spread the word, repeat these, get these, get the word out. This is bullshit. It's time. We we have to draw the line. If it starts with ten and eleven year olds and twerking competitions and videos on fucking Netflix, which by the way, it was a Netflix original, so those motherfuckers need to feel some heat. This wasn't something someone else did, and they're just showing it. This is a Netflix original. Someone, I want you to think about this. Someone had a script. Someone had producers. Someone had some money backing this actual idea. Went to Netflix and got a green light for budget to produce this on Netflix's dime. Or all dimes. All of our subscriptions paid for this, by the way. This isn't something that someone else produced was, you know, was on some like, you know, backwards fucking channel or video. And then, you know, Netflix just picked it up like a documentary. And it's an expose about why it's such a bad thing. No. Oh, con fucking trare, you French fucks that produced it. And yeah, it's in French. No, we can't we can't be okay with this. There's no fucking way. No. Um no. Any of us with children, can you believe this shit? That's disgusting. No, it's fucking it's not an open yeah. format, open platform. I, I think the chat has spoken. Everybody, there. Everybody is. Back. You guys take over the conversation. I'm a little bit. I, I, I gotta go for a while, but, I just, but I, I'm sorry, track. I love you. You know, I no. love you, bro. But no, this was an important thing. You had to. You had to bring this up. I am so glad you broke in today. Exploitation, yes, sit room. Exploitation. Do you, before you go, Mike. Before you go. What? You what? You remember back in the day, because I, I know, because I remember back in the day, all the shit with um, John Benet Ramsey. Yeah. And all the shit that happened because of the pageants and sexualizing children. And now we're we're back to this. Yeah. Nobody, you, nobody you took know, a long hard enough, look at oddly it. Enough, oddly enough, Cylon words come to my mind. All this has happened before and all this shall happen again. Yeah, and you know they had they had fucking eight and nine year olds that these these parents were were drilling like you know this is your life and you have to wear makeup and you have to do this and you have to look like an object and look at what we're back to look at what we're back to unfortunately it's gotten to the point where we just have to say fuck Hollywood. Uh, Oh fuck Netflix! This. Fuck Netflix! Psychodorf yeah. Nine. I have no subscription to cancel, but I've already dropped comments and a download. Um, I dropped Netflix when they let go of um, Daredevil and Punisher and um, the all that the Defenders. I I dropped it. Um, I I was like, well, you know what? What do what do I really have to 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 watch on here? They didn't fight for what they were doing course that would have been a very very difficult thing to do with disney but you had some of the best television on a streaming service and you ganked it because disney slapped you down it's what you did disney wanted all the marvel stuff in their own little personal piggy bank and when i saw netflix take a knee on it all i said no i'm done and i got a different streaming service i actually use a foreign streaming service that has much more to offer because I won't I won't go with Netflix. No. I will not go with Netflix. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys what to do with your money. I'm not going to tell you guys what streaming service you need to have or support. Um, I'm just going to say I myself will not support Netflix. I will not encourage them to create keep creating content like this, backing content like this. This is completely fucked up. Oh my God! Broken Entertainment. Read that. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God. I just fell. Fuck. That's a Read Broken Entertainment. The woman, woman who made this, went around videoing underage girls dancing and doing random shit. Yeah. Yeah. And we're the ones who get shadow banned on Twitter. Yep. A woman we're of color. Like a woman of color chooses to direct this piece of shit movie the ratio on the netflix trailer right now is seven thousand upvotes sixty thousand downvotes 
I just put the link in there so anyone can you can look at the trailer and down it and ratio it down. Thank you. Uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to do that myself. God, I, I, it's really tough to get through the whole fucking trailer. I'll be honest with you. Like it's it's really tough to get through the trailer. And um, what the hell? Are you fucking kidding me? What the? Go. No. Uh -uh. Oh, no. Oh. It's like little mini Escasio Cortez. Yep. Oh. Yeah, okay, okay. 60,000 downvotes. Keep it going, folks. Keep it going. No. What are they going to have next? Where is this going? Oh, my God. They did not do that. They did not fucking do that. They have got... No. Hmm. No. I closed it. I couldn't. They've got ripping apart boxes filled with lingerie like it's a fucking party. 11-year-old girls ripping apart boxes filled with lingerie. No. Fucking no. That is just no. You see that sick. there's like a there's a scene right before they end this where this girl is in a a dancing outfit and she's bawling her eyes out. And no, this is fucking no. No, she's in like a stripper outfit and she's crying. No. 11-year-old girls tries to escape family dysfunction by joining a free-spirited dance clique named Cuties as they build their self-confidence through dance. No. That's not dance. No. No. Okay. I've seen fucking everything now. I'm sorry. Sexualizing children? That's disgusting. And Netflix approved all this. Yep. This is a Netflix original, which means that someone brought it to them and they uh, they produced it. They bought it. They bought it and finished it. Greenlight. It means that, you know, the project got Greenlight. When it's a Netflix original, then that means they are the financiers. Is that what our brave soldiers died for? Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Sure. B Star 333, you know, I'm fucking on fire with this. Yeah. No. Oh, no. I cannot have my son grow up in this kind of fucking world. There's just no fucking way. No, absolutely fucking not. Absolutely fucking not. Um, guys, you know what? I I, I I wouldn't even say watch the fucking trailer. I can't mind no. out of my fucking... I can't bleach my eyes enough to get that out of my fucking mind now. Um, Adega Outlaw. I know I know Adega's on fire with this shit. It's not building self-confidence. It's destroying self-respect. No, go, 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 desensitizing I, I, I the child's go. feelings. Oh. All right, brother. Go. Take it easy, man. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. And Lady Q twerking is clothed sex grinding. Yes. Yes. Class action lawsuit. I, they, 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 more than that, um, if she went around videotaping 11-year-olds 
Um, I, that's child exploitation. Yes, it is. I cannot believe that. I, I just, it, it's, it's mind boggling. It is absolutely fucking mind boggling. Soul assassin, truly disgusting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Hollywood. Yeah, actually are 11. They are, yeah, they're actually 11 years old. This is what we're headed towards. Yep. This is what we're headed towards. This is what all this has been about. This is what this culture war is headed towards. They want to make all this okay. Um, we, I, I don't know if any of y'all saw the, um, the troll doll with the little jewel in its hoo-ha that apparently giggles when you touch it. Um, that is fucked up. This is fucked up. Um, the fact that this, um, this new group that's running around wanting to, um, join the LGBTQ plus community, I believe it's called, um, map the simple fact that they are trying to become a part of that <clears throat> is truly disgusting and if they allow that and if they allow this if netflix doesn't fucking say no we made a big ass fucking mistake i'd wrench and I'd, I'd pull back any support but that's me i'm not going to tell y'all what to do with your money i'm not going to tell y'all what you um what you shouldn't support. I will talk about positives like EBS's campaign and um, independents trying to become better writers like Adega Outlaw, getting their work published, getting their work out there to all of us because it's great work. I, I will encourage you to support the things that are coming out of our community and other communities that are great. Mm -hmm. This is not something that um i can ignore either though yeah. and i just i won't i won't have any part of it chris persia low-key family dysfunction isn't this movie painting a foreign culture in a negative light isn't that islamophobic on top of exploitation f minors yeah yeah it's like stunning and brave and there's going to be people that defend it for that because they want people to be okay with this they want people to be okay with this. That's what they want. That's what they're fighting for. So that the next time a Epstein comes along, he's not attacked and thrown in jail because of what he did. They can just say, oh, well, he really loves them. So it's really okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's child exploitation. It is... Um, it's everything we hate about the environment in Hollywood and they want to make it okay. Yes, Darth Haster. That's exactly what map is. And if you can, if you see that out there, Valhalla, you see what he's written there. Um, yeah, map. Keep that in your fucking mind because that's what they want to make okay and add into the LGBTQ community. That's what they want to make okay. That's what they want to add in there. And if you are a part of the LGBTQ community, raise your fucking voices and say, this is not fucking acceptable. You know, um, there was a big leaving, leaving the left movement because of the shit they were doing. And I think that if I was a member of the LGBTQ community. I would say I'm going to leave this fucking community if you guys allow this fucking shit to happen because that is not acceptable. Fuck map. That's right. That's right. Damn, that is not acceptable. I do. I would not want to be associated with a group that allows that. I would not under any circumstances. And a day outlaw for everybody out there watching right now. I want to give a quick update. There will be no show tonight. Seven kinds of mischief will not air tonight. I have never missed a show, ladies and gentlemen, but I will be driving 10 hours to Houston 
today as soon as this show is over and I could possibly make it in time. But after 10 hours on the road, it, it, I, I just could not give you what I would consider a good show. I would be complete. I'm going to be completely exhausted by the time I get there. It is going to be a tough drive. Um, so I have postponed this week for next week. We are going to, um, we're going to have a guest, Colin P. Smith, along with the Dega. Um, and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk more about World War II and give you guys a great show. I do not think I could give it justice tonight. You know, I've had people asking me to live stream. Would you mind if I take over your time? So oh, go I ahead. Go ahead. I, as long as you know, we'll be back tomorrow eh, or next week. Oh, absolutely. I just thought, you know, people have been asking me, hey, when are you going to live stream? So I thought, what the heck? If you're going to be gone, why not? Why not? And thank you, everybody. Everybody saying the safe travels. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you, Beastars. Thank you, Samantha Joe. Thank all of you. East Limp Burkholder. Thank you, brother. Um, Soul Assassin. Thanks, guys, so very much. It's going to be a long, hard drive, but um, it's going to be it's going to be a trip. I'm going on an adventure. Um, so <laughs> you may need as much coffee as Trey usually has a. An hour. Yes, yes, I probably will. So, guys, um, let Netflix know this isn't okay. Let Netflix know. Let the world know. This is not acceptable. Exploiting 11-year-olds for your own agenda is not fucking acceptable. This is not okay. It is not fucking okay. Um, and Life with Matthew. Low-key 10 hours to drive. Put on some audiobooks. Nah, brother. I'm going to be listening to um, the entire Amon Amarth um, library on my drive. So I'm going to hook my phone into my car and I'm going to blast some Amon Amarth on my way to Houston. I'm going to listen to every album. Um, cause there are, I think two or three albums I've never listened to that I don't have that are so old that I, I just, I've never had the chance to listen, sit down and listen to them. So. Well, Adega, if you would like to, uh, you know, join with me tonight. You're more than welcome. If you want to just take the, the evening off and relax, go for it. All right, guys. Seven o'clock. Captain Trek's channel. Be there or be square. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today, for listening to our Farscape review. And we will catch you guys next time. I will see you all tomorrow on Mornings of Mischief. Have a great one, everybody.
these videos are tremendous. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hammer that notification bell.